Th thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for our next hot topic, and this says federal government drags 36 governors to Supreme Court over local government's autonomy. Now, the federal government has instituted a legal action against the governors of the 36 states of the Federation at the Supreme Court over alleged misconduct in the administration of local government areas, LGAs. FG in the suit, which was filed by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Prince Latif Fagbemi S.A.N., is seeking full autonomy for all local government areas in the country as the third tier of government. Now, joining us to have a conversation about this is Nick Aguile, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning, and uh, good morning to our viewers. All right, so we're talking about local government um, areas autonomy now. With the way Nigeria works at the moment, most times it is the state governor that still rules the affairs of the local government. Um, but then in the constitution, it's supposed to be a third tier of government. And so um, the, the Supreme Court, or rather the, the federal government has approached the Supreme Court, you know, suing this got 36 state governors. And I just want to take a little bit of the constitution now. In the 1999 Constitution, um, Constitution Section 7, Subsection 1 says, of the Constitution declares unequivocally that the system of local government by democratically elected local government council is under this Constitution granted, and accordingly, the government of every state shall ensure their existence under a law which provides for the establishment of this local government um, area. So now we're seeing that the government shall en ensure their existence, but I don't know if the government... Um, or rather the state government still has to rule the affairs. I want to get your comment on the fact that, you know, the, the state governments are still the ones meddling in the business of the local government areas. Thank you very much uh, for the, the start of the program, uh, yeah. which you have uh, rightly said. Uh, I think what is happening here is that the constitution is ambiguous, uh, it gives uh, legislative powers to the National Assembly over local governments. At the same time, it gives legislative powers over local government to state assemblies. Uh, so uh, what has happened in the past is that there has been an attempt to correct that constitutional provision so that the autonomy of local governments becomes straight, unambiguous. But those attempts to change the constitution have been unsuccessful because they require the state houses of assembly to back it. And the state houses of assemblies have refused to back it. And you, you can only just see the anomaly here a constitutional provision to grant look uh, to grant local government uh, autonomy is not being backed by state houses of assembly even the constitutional uh, review to grant autonomy to the state houses of assemblies is also rejected by the state houses of assembly so you can see the the hand of the governors in this so since the attempt to amend the constitution to make the provision over local governments to become unambiguous have been uh, have failed in the past this uh, case that has now been filed at the supreme court by the federal government is another way for the federal government to try and arrive at the same result so um, the, the, the issue is very straightforward. Like you have said, in, in uh, Section 7, it says that local government are to be governed by democratically elected councils, and that is guaranteed. There is nothing in the Constitution that grants the state governors the power to dissolve local government. Hmm. And so in that, in that aspect alone, it's an illegality that is being perpetrated by the local government. And I believe that uh, 
when the Supreme Court begins to hear this case, those are the, 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 the evidence that the federal government is going to put on the table as part of the reason why this case uh, has now been taken to the judicial arm of government. So all over the, the country, you will see that in most states, as we speak today, the governors uh, should pretend over local government you know, uh, arrogate onto themselves past that the constitution does not give them because the constitution does not have any provision for local government transition councils. There is no provision like that. But like I said, it is the ambiguity, especially in section 162 of the constitution, where the, the, the federation is to send money to the local government by laws made by the national assembly and again the same constitution says the, the the state assembly is to make laws on how those revenues will be distributed and constitution goes ahead to create a local government joint account for each state what's the reason you know there is no state joint account federal government sends money directly to each state government there's nothing like federal government create a, 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 a joint account for states so why are we creating a joint account for local government, yeah. which have now been hijacked by governors to perpetrate these illegalities that we're talking about? So this case is to strengthen all those areas. So, I mean, you've spoken about the ambiguity of, you know, the Constitution. And, and I think it's a Constitution that definitely allows this. Because when you're not being specific, when you're not trying to make people understand in clear terms, being concise with the words, then obviously it will be taken out of context. So, if we're talking about this, shouldn't this now be a case whereby we start to look at the Constitution and, you know, try to be more concise and, and clear with this? Maybe we're talking about an amendment of this constitution because clearly um, it, it affects the financial independence of the local government um, areas. And another question I was going to ask, aside, you know, having to amend the constitution, also, how does this impact them? You know, the the the, the, the local government. How does the how does it impact their own independence, having to be able to do things for themselves? Well, the, the the first part of uh, the question, or the first question you have asked regarding the amendment of the constitution is actually the right solution but like i said attempts have been made in the past where the constitutional review process has happened and those ambiguous sections of the constitution have been made unambiguous have been have been straightened out and the autonomy of uh, local government is no longer in in question is no longer in doubt it is very straightforward. But the same constitution says before any constitution amendment passes, it must go to the state houses of assembly to agree to it. And the state houses of assembly in Nigeria firmly and remotely being controlled by the governor have continuously rejected the changes in the constitution the proposed changes in the constitution that will make it unambiguous hmm. the autonomy of local government that's what has been happening and that is the frustration of the federal government because the federal government is unable to pass and sign into law the amended constitution if it's not being backed by the state houses of assembly and that's why i said this case that the federal government has now instituted at the Supreme Court is, is another way for them to go and get the same answer, to get the same result. Since the constitutional review process is dead on arrival because the governors are blocking it through the state houses of assembly, the federal government now thinks that the judiciary should come in. And since the judiciary is not directly under the control of the governors, that they, they, they will probably get a result at the, at the Supreme Court. Now, coming to the, the second question, which is, is autonomy not going to be beneficial to the local government? Of course, autonomy is going to be beneficial to the local government. Um, the local government is the tire of government that is closest to the people. It is the tire of government the people see every day. Because everywhere in Nigeria today, if you wake up, you are going to wake up in a local government. 
Yeah. That's just the fact. You are going to work up in a local government so long as you are on Nigeria territory. And if that local government is responsible, is delivering their, their, their constitutional mandate, as it used to happen, then life will become better. Imagine, there are 774 local governments in, in, in Nigeria. You know, actually, there are 768 local governments in Nigeria and six uh, 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 councils yeah. in, uh, in the FCT, which together makes it uh, 774. Imagine that there is development work happening in 774 locations mm. simultaneously across Nigeria. Nigeria will be a much better place than it is today. You know? So if we woke up today in 774 locations in Nigeria, which is a local government, uh, you know, education has been provided, uh, sanitary services have been provided, uh, streets have been done, roads have been done, you know, things like that. It's, 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 it's going to improve the quality of life of Nigerians. It's going to create jobs. And it's going to take governors right to the grassroots. But the governors are not allowing that to happen. Look, I had a friend, uh, I don't want to mention this, but I had a friend who, who was a local government chairman. This man's allocation, he never saw it. When the allocation came, the governor sees the allocation. He had letter heading, letter headed paper for each local government. They will use the letter headed paper of each local government award contracts in the name of the local government. <laughs> Pay for those contracts. And my local government chairman friend will just be watching. They will now send a, a little balance to the local government, and he too will just uh, you know deal with it in the way he wants with his people. And that will be the end of local government governance for that month until the next allocation comes again. Hmm. So this is the kind of situation that is happening. Though obviously, if the federal government is able to pull this off through the judicial process, it's going to help Nigeria greatly. And actually, this is what we need to happen. Hmm. So obviously, we're going to um, see certain changes if the Supreme Court um, rules in favor of the federal government. But I'm just wondering what the relationship is going to be like between the state government and the local government right now. Because if obviously the state government definitely wants that autonomy for themselves and finding out that the local government might just be able to get it as well. So they probably do not need the state governor's, um, you know, decision on several things that needs to be done especially when it comes to like the growth and development of their local government, then obviously the state government might just feel a little bit spited. So I'm wondering what the relationship is going to be like, and I hope it's not going to be contentious when it happens. What do you think? So the constitution creates three tiers of government, the federal, state, and local government. When the states get their federation account allocation, the federal government is not deciding what they do with it. And so it should be for local government. When local government receive their, their allocation, it shouldn't be for the governors to decide what the local government should do with the money. You know, the federal government, the state government, and the local government all have their functions. For instance, in Nigeria today, every road you see in Nigeria, every road, either belongs to the federal government, the state government, or a local government. So when the federal government gets its own allocation, it's using it to fix federal roads. State government gets the allocation, they are using it to fix state roads. The same for local government. They should get the allocation and fix local government road, roads. They should also fix all the services that local governments are expected to, 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 um, to provide. For instance, the sanitation services you know, cleaning the, the, the cities and all of that, providing uh, healthcare services, health centers yes. in the villages and all of that, supporting agriculture and all of those things. Let the local government, which are also uh, a tire of government, be able to do that. A local government is a system, as the constitution calls it. It has an executive arm of government. It also has uh, a legislative arm of government. 
They also have even judicial government with some of the local court, customary courts and all of that. You know, so the state should just allow local government to operate on that. For me, if you ask me, I will say that uh, we don't even need states in Nigeria. We don't need states in Nigeria. Why do I say so? In, uh, in the UK, where I'm speaking to you from now, there are no states. The UK has a federal government and a local government system. You know, so when money is coming from, uh, and, and, and monies are being generated at the local level and sent to the federal. And the federal is only responsible for big ticket items, like, you know, defense, foreign current, uh, I mean, foreign policy, uh, economic policy, uh, issuance of currency, and all of that. The local governments are doing the rest of the things. You know, we copy this democracy from the United States, this system of government that we are running in Nigeria, we copied it from the United States, where they have federal, state, and local governments, mm. yeah, and counties. But the reverse is the case in the United States. In the United States, the states are the ones that are generating the revenue and sending it to yeah. the federal, you know? But in Nigeria, it is the federal generating the revenue, sending it to the states. And then the one they sent to the local government, the states also hijack it. So what is, what is the value of states in, in, in Nigeria? In the U.S., we say the value of state is because the states are generating revenue and sending to the federal. In Nigeria, what is the value of a state? If there are no states today, what harm will be done to Nigeria democracy since they are also consumers of money coming from the center, not that they are generating any, any revenue? So mm. if you ask me, we don't even need them. So if we are, if we are courageous in our decision making, we should just scrap the state so that the federal government sends money directly to each of the 774 local governments, and you can see that development will begin to boom in Nigeria when those 774 centers uh, become in development uh, uh, areas. Hmm. So, I mean, we, with all of this now, with the federal government taking the state's government to um, the Supreme Court, obviously we're hoping for, we're having a positive outlook that they might just win. Um, but now, uh, to wrap it up in just about a minute, how can, you know, the autonomy of the local governments be better protected um, and implemented moving forward? Well, the autonomy of the local government will be better protected uh, moving forward either of two things. The constitution is amended to make that autonomy unambiguous, mm. a process that the governors have continuously stored, or the Supreme Court makes a clear judicial pronouncement regarding the autonomy of local governments. Either of those two ways, uh, things can happen. But if you ask me, if I were in President Tinubu's shoes, I would arrogate unto myself the past by interpreting the constitution this way. The constitution, like you started this program with, unambiguously in section seven says, the system of local government in Nigeria will be by democratically elected councils, and that is guaranteed. And any local government in Nigeria that does not have that system, I will not send federation account money to them. So let it be the governors to go and sue me. Mm. at the Supreme Court. I will stop giving them money. And then I will sit back. If the governors feel that I have done something wrong, let them be the one to go and sue me. And then the case will be will be ongoing. So if I were President Tinubu, that's what I will, I will use Section 7 and stop sending money to any local council in Nigeria that does not have uh, a system of democratically elected council members. Mm. Well, we hope that President Bola Tinubu does that, making that declaration, or the um, Supreme Court makes, you know, a pronouncement on this. Or, um, better still, the Constitution, the 1999 Constitution will just be amended because we don't want a Constitution that is so ambiguous and then the local governments do not have the autonomy. For the growth and development of each local government area, it is imperative that they have their autonomy and then they can have some form of financial independence and um, some form of functionality for their own people, for their own communities. Anyway, this is where we have to wrap it up here. I want to say thank you, Nick, for coming. It's always a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank you.
you very much and have a nice day. All right, we've been speaking with Nick Agule. He's a public affairs analyst. And we're talking about the fact that the federal government has dragged the 36th state government state governors to court um, regarding the autonomy of the local government areas. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show. It's always a pleasure having a breakfast with you every day. My name is Rome Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.